Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are on week three of the How to Create Your Dream Space series. Week one was all about function. Week two was about finding your style and dissecting all the common themes to help inspire your design. And now we are on to week three. It's all about color. Nothing is as personal as color. Choosing a color palette is probably one of the most daunting tasks for homeowners and one of the most frequently asked questions I get in the comments. Color has the ability to elicit really strong feelings when you walk into a space. It can make you feel happy, sad, energized, focused, confident, or cool, depending on how you use the color in your space. Choosing a color palette that reflects your home, lifestyle, and needs is probably one of the most fun yet challenging aspects to interior design. If you have ever wondered what color palettes are the best to fit your style, this video is for you. This video will be broken down into three parts. The first is the psychology of color in interior design. Next, I'll be showing you how to use a color wheel to create a color palette for your space. And finally, we'll be diving into my top designer tips to help you create color schemes for your space. Before you begin to think about colors, you wanna ask yourself these three important questions. Number one, who will be using the space? Number two, how do you plan on using it? And number three, what is the feeling that you're trying to create in that room? These are all very crucial and important factors in deciding the color palette for your space. Are you redesigning your new work from home office slash dining room that needs to feel equally productive and energized? You might want to start with a warm wall color, which has a stimulating effect, and accent with tones of white, maybe bright white dining chairs or a white wood table. Are you updating your bedroom and want a calming, relaxed vibe? Dark moody colors create a womb-like effect and always remember that cooler colors tend to recede. If it's the living room you're working on, imagine the mood that you're trying to set in there. If you want light, bright, relaxing, and fresh, consider greens and blues. If you have an open concept space, consider designing the room according to your personality. Which leads me to my next portion of this video, the psychology of color and design. I have a background in psychology. I studied psych in undergrad before making the leap onto interior design. I find it important to break down the key characteristics of color that affects how you feel, think, and act in a space. Once you understand how certain colors affect the users of the space, it might help you better understand which colors are best suited for which areas in your home. Let's start with red. The key terms that signify red is bold, love, strength, warmth, energy, and passion. Deep dark crimson hues are sexy and dramatic, while bright red is often seen as primary colors of traditional Asian design to signify strength, vitality, and power. Pink is sweet, playful, compassionate, and feminine. Pink was having a huge moment in design. I'm sure you're familiar with Millennial Pink. It has blush tones with a tinge of coral and it can be seen everywhere from interiors to clothing to furniture and even packaging. This was considered super trendy a few years ago and I could say it's almost dying out. I bought my house about five years ago in 2015 and I painted my home office a dusty pink color. Then boom, one year later, Millennial Pink came out and everyone thought I was following a trend. But I've had it all along and I still love it, even though I see it so much now. So the moral of the story is go with your gut. If you love it, who cares what anyone else thinks? So just make sure that you love the color and not merely jumping on a design trend. Orange is bright, fun, social, brave, confident, and creative. Orange can be seen in interiors with terracotta tones. Coral and peach are examples you might see a lot in interior design. Yellow has ties with optimism, sunshine, happiness, and self-esteem. Yellow is one of the friendliest colors of the color wheel and for good reason. It just makes you feel happy. It's been known as a color to encourage communication. So it's actually great if you have teenagers living in the home. But don't paint your entire home in bright, gaudy yellow. When overdone, it can actually cause anxiety and stress. It's best left for smaller areas and accessories. If you love that feeling behind yellow, try golden brass accents on for size. Green has ties with nature, healing, harmony, freshness, and growth. 
There's a reason that Jungalow style is so huge in design. Everyone loves houseplants to bring that fresh outdoor feeling in. But for walls and interiors, Hunter Green and Emerald can add elegance and sophistication to a space. Sage is one of my favorite neutrals that can stimulate creativity, while pale greens promote healing and growth. Blue is calm, serene, peaceful, trusting, loyal, and intelligent. Light powder blues are calming and elicit a spa-like vibe in a space. It's great for bathrooms. Navy blues add a strong masculine vibe, while denim is cool and casual. Purple is all about royalty, creativity, authenticity, luxury, and spirituality. Deep violets and rich plum colors are often seen in global bohemian designs. It adds an exotic flair to your space. I love the look of lavender for a nursery or kids room. I don't know any toddler that doesn't love purple. Brown has ties with longevity, austerity, the outdoors, and is rustic and rugged. Seen in everything from wood tones to leather, organic natural tones make any space feel instantly cozy. Brown comes in so many tints and shades and it's so versatile. It can blend with any design style and mood you're trying to create. Black is the ultimate in sophistication, glamour, drama, luxury, and security. Black to me signifies pure elegance. I love a black room with lighter furnishings for instant drama. But if black walls feel a little too overwhelming for you, try black accents in smaller doses. Glossy black is more glamorous, while matte black can be casual or sophisticated depending on the colors surrounding it. No matter how you use black in your interior space, know that it is always timeless and chic. White is all about purity, cleanliness, truth, power, and simplicity. It's the perfect blank palette to start injecting color in strategic doses. You might remember from my master bedroom do's and don'ts video that my previous wall color was almost this dark chocolate black walnut vibe. When I was pregnant with Kamari, I had this wild idea maybe like two weeks before I was going to give birth that I wanted a complete blank slate for her. I painted over all that dark brown. Now my bedroom is completely white. It's bright. It's a beautiful blank slate for me to start layering on a new look. I switched out some of the main furniture pieces and I cannot wait to show you guys more progress this fall. Now that you understand the basic psychology of color, let's move on to creating your ideal color palette. Use the color wheel to create a color palette that best suits the vibe that you're going for in that space. Here are four different types of color schemes to help inspire your palette. Monochromatic. This color scheme uses tonal colors of the same family with the addition of white or black to help lighten or darken the space. For example, in this scheme, red can start from a soft pink or a dark burgundy, and all three hues of the same shade are used to create the monochromatic effect. Next is analogous. The analogous scheme uses colors that appear next to each other on the color wheel. For example, green can be used with blue and purple, or yellow can be used with orange and red. This creates a colorful palette that is harmonious and blends well. Moving on to contrast. 
The high contrast color palette is one of my favorites to be used in interior design. I love that it creates a bold and dramatic interior. Of course, black and white is timeless and a classic example of high contrast, but you can also use color groups for contrast. You can mix yellow orange, green blue, and red purple. This introduces more color into the space and more room for you to play around with the color palette. Lastly, we have the complementary color scheme. The complementary scheme is where two opposing colors that are situated across from one another on the color wheel, such as blue and orange, are used together to create energy and a highly charged color scheme. Don't be afraid to use toned down versions of the complementary color scheme to make the space feel very soothing, but still dramatic. Here are my top designer tips to help you create the ultimate color palette for your space. When choosing a color palette, I like to start with an inspiration piece that you love. Maybe it's an area rug, maybe it's a statement art piece. You want to be able to pull colors from the area rug or the art piece to inspire your design. Next, you should move on to the main furniture pieces like the sofa or accent chairs. Then lastly, you can select paint. You'll remember from my favorite neutral paints video and my common design mistakes video that you should always choose paint last. Why is this the reason? It's because paint can be customized and match any color that you're going for in your space. It can virtually be mixed to any color you like to support your design. Remember that paint is the first thing that goes up in a space, but it's the last thing that you should specify. If you're more comfortable with neutral light pale walls, look to your furnishings, accessories, and window treatments to inject color. When choosing a bold color palette, look for modern clean lines with not a lot of ornamentation to help the colors stand out. Look to your closet to help inspire the colors that you love to live in. Chances are, if you see the same color in your wardrobe, you'll know that you love that color and you actually look good in it. With that tip in mind, you should dress your room in the same colors that flatter you. If your style is casual and you're always known to rock denim and jeans, you might want to invest in a navy blue sofa using those same style cues. If you're getting dressed up for a fancy occasion and you find yourself always reaching to your gold accessories, try mixing in gold and brass elements in your interior design. When in doubt, black and white it out. Black and white is a classic color combination that never goes out of style. Accent with metallics like gold and silver for a touch of glamour. Or accent with leathers and woods for a rich cozy look. In the end, if you design with heart, everyone will appreciate your efforts because it's inherently you. Even if they would never ever decorate their home in the same manner. I mean, take my home for example. I get so many comments that it's totally not their style, but they absolutely appreciate the time, efforts, and energy I took into creating a home that I love. It's important to choose colors in your home that reflects your vibe and lifestyle. Consider the purpose of each room and how you want people to feel in it, and you'll never go wrong. I hope you all are enjoying the How to Create Your Dream Space series so far. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know what is the biggest decorating mistake that you've made with color and what you've learned from it. The viewers are loving this comment section and I know they comb it to look for answers that are similar to their own. I read all of the comments, so please know that all of your feedback is helping this design community tremendously. If there's anything you need guidance on when it comes to color in your space, drop me a line in the comments below and I'll be sure to help you. Next week is all about learning how to measure your space and scaling furniture proportionally to fit right in. Please share this video if you know anyone else who needs interior design help on how to create their dream space. Of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.